Hey, deserving listeners, this is part five in my video series in which I follow the story between Ginger Snaps on TikTok and her allegations about Jeremy in the past from Love is Blind season six. They're like, hey, you'll get him back. I never got those back. Not because there was ever any evidence of it ever happening, but because I learned the hard way, if you choose to turn things over like that, good luck ever getting anything back, and those were destroyed. <laughs> It's possible that he was falsely accused. The police were super chill. He volunteered because he didn't want to have to deal with it. And then they have a policy or they made a mistake or he left the guns in their possession too long and they destroyed them. More likely thing (laughs) is that his guns were confiscated and as a matter of procedure, they destroyed the guns. Uh, uh, So... Which do you think happened? Lost things from my father that night. I lost things from my grandfather that night, all over a lie. I I guess so. But if you volunteered to give your guns over, then that's kind of your fault. (laughs) If you were falsely accused. Uh, Well, anyway. I've gotten over that, but obviously with this coming back up, it drums up a little bit of that, that kind of raw emotional feeling there so so let's imagine that he's not telling the whole truth right now and this emotion is legit which you could imagine that he did threaten her with a gun the police did come they did point their guns at him he was detained they did investigate the place they did take the guns and they did destroy them and some of those guns were family heirlooms or sentimental to him and the the emotion that we are now seeing is that rage that she called the police and had my possessions destroyed because of her you know if if we imagine that she's in the ballpark of truth it contextualizes his reactivity right now pretty dark really we're going to address a couple of the bullet points here. Again, I didn't watch all the videos. I don't want to watch all the videos. Now, I want to be clear. I don't want anyone going after him. None of us have enough information. Uh, I don't want anyone, or I, I don't encourage people to DM him or attack him or comment and you know directly communicate. I, I guess there's a chance he might see this video. I will say that I have a track record of being able to talk to perpetrators who are denying these things in a way that makes them feel safe to talk with me. Not that I lie to them. Perpetrators, when they're being accused of perpetrating, there could be a a common way that they're talked to that I don't talk to them in that way. Because, you know, I I treated these people. I can, you know, continue to potentially treat these people. And I, it doesn't serve me to alienate them and berate them. I have a way of, of, a, of not acting like I don't think they did it, but allowing for the possibility that I don't know the full story while also bonding with them and having common ground, getting both of us to like each other so that we can start working on things because it takes time. So I hope that at the very least that you'd, you, you help the process because, you know, if she is right and if he still has a problem with it, I think it would help him if at least part, if not all, but I can't expect that, of the response to him had some compassion, some allowance for the possibility that there could be some truth to what he's saying that he might misremember or that he might actually care about other people and not want to do these things, you know, there, there's a lot of, a lot of possibilities. You know, the th- things that I find work is common ground, not coming across like you're a threat, coming across like you're a strong person. You can't be a wet noodle with a lot of people, especially that present like this, but also someone that is, I don't know, kind of fatherly, like you, you see the situation, but you're, you're with them. You know, when, when you make a mistake, and you're caught and your parent is sitting with you 
and you're continuing to lie, your parent doesn't just smack you across the face or reject you and send you to an orphanage. You know, they're they're with, hopefully they're with you and they're just like, yeah, uh, it doesn't look that way to me, but you know maybe, and uh, I believe in you and I hope that you can change. I expect you to change this. I, I believe that you can change this aspect of yourself, but it's got to change, buddy. You know, it, it has that kind of energy to it. And a lot of times for these individuals, they never had that. And although it's not what consciously they want, it is unconsciously what they want. They want someone to hold them accountable. They want someone to stay with them. They want mentorship and guidance and help, and, you know, because for a lot of people like this, they don't set out to do this. They get confused in the moment and they don't know what else to do. We don't have to have sympathy for the things that they end up doing out of that place, but it, it's not as if they have this mission statement of harming others and then lying about it. You know, it's, it, they're confused. They're, um, they start justifying things in their mind because they don't know what else to do. They're trying to hold on to some sliver of self-esteem and they don't have any other guidance or options around that, you know, so I just hope that people don't make things worse for him and for people that come into contact with him later. Talking about Meredith saying she doesn't stay out all night, go out drinking, all that stuff. A couple of these things I can't prove, one of them I can. It was an every weekend event where this person was out till three, four, five o'clock in the morning, completely no showing, completely disappeared, had no idea where she was at. I'm 23, 24 at the time. In a mo okay, it's possible that that's truthful. He's not saying a number there. By that description, it could have been two or three times over the span of a number of months that she came home really late. Um, yeah, it's, it's possible. It's not a high crime. It is notable, though, that he's even bringing this up because it's not exactly relevant. And it kind of hints at what possibly what really happened, which is that he was triggered by this, and this is what led to all the things we heard the allegations regarding. Uh, and or he is blowing out a portion because he remembers it emotionally, or he's lying about it. In the street. You know, it, it wouldn't be the first time that an abusive person will exaggerate even consciously as a way to justify abuse even in their own mind, but particularly are the people, because it, it, you know it's not really central. I'm just trying to think if I were being accused for years of threatening someone with a gun, and I had a complaint that they stayed out a lot late. If I were to make a TikTok video a lot later, that wouldn't be something I would highlight. <laughs> I would think, well, yeah, she stayed out a lot, which she's lying about. But that's not really central to the thing, and it doesn't really prove. If anything, me mentioning it shows that I have a lot of energy around that, which kind of corroborates what her thing was, that I was a jealous, controlling person. Emotional wreck. I don't know what to do about it, so I just kind of sat and dealt with it. I was really, excuse my language, fucking stupid for doing that, but that's what I did. Now, uh, he said I was fucking stupid, so it's possible that that is truthful. I don't know, but it kind of had a ring of of sincerity to it. Abusive people can have a side of them that hates themselves and will chastise them. They're basically, in a, especially when emotions in, are involved, they're basically coming down hard on someone, whether it's themselves or other people. They just see the world through that lens because that's what was shown them when they were growing up, that someone's always a piece of shit. Someone is always just ridiculously humiliated. They're just so stupid. Everyone is so stupid. And externally, you might hear these individuals talking about other people this way, maybe sometimes you, and then even less occasionally, you'll hear them saying it. They'll reveal that that's how they talk to themselves because it's a schema. It's a way of seeing reality that when someone makes a mistake, they are a ridiculous piece of crap, an irrelevant, idiotic, just rejectable, uh, so, you know, there's different flavors. There's like, you're stupid, and then there's another one where you're disgusting, and there's another one where you're nothing, you know. 
or all the above. So I just want to throw that out there. Uh, that would be an hypothesis that I would pursue. And it would be relevant to the treatment because that would be something to attack in terms of self-awareness, you know, to have him not pr actively participate in that urge to have those kinds of statements even in his own head, but also to heal from. The one thing I can prove, and I'm not going to, you guys can go look this up yourself. I'm not going to just give it, give it out at this point. I can back this up because there's a DUI from a week before we left to come to Florida where she pulled the same shit. She got pulled over at one o'clock in the morning driving from leaving a house party. Again, could be true. Um, doesn't uh, move my needle in terms of who to believe. <laughs> uh, I know for some people it would. I think for some people it would. It would say, oh, well, my goodness, she can't be believed if that happened. Um, it's, it's not relevant to the story. I want to be clear. It's possible that he is telling the truth. I, I don't know. But that detail doesn't help me anyway. Here's something else I can't prove. It did happen, but we're just going to throw it out there. Is a couple of months to maybe a year after this all happened, I actually ended up getting an apology email from Meredith over this whole situation. She didn't have a way to contact me over the phone. She didn't have a way to you know, reach me anywhere else. So she emailed me on my work email. Unfortunately, I don't work with that company anymore, so I lost that email, but that did happen. I can't prove it. Maybe I can find it at some point. Um, here's my favorite part of all this. Since all of this has happened, we've actually been in contact with each other. We've been cordial up through all of this. Uh, again, it's not really an indication that she's lying. Uh, there's a number of possibilities. It also could be that he's making this up. That what's cordial, right? He might have uh, texted her and she was polite back a couple times. Or they're really good friends now. I don't know. <laughs> but it doesn't sound like it's in that direction. It sounds like it's more the former direction. It's possible that she has a policy of being cordial with him and... Uh, uh, you know, to make sure that he doesn't target her. It's also possible that she has positive memories of him. And now that she's no longer with him, she's free to have those, those memories and doesn't hate, hate, hate him enough to just completely not, res not reply or not reach out to him occasionally. You know, that's, that's possible. So there's that. But I will say that if he can provide something to hold on to in terms of facts here. It does push the needle a little bit because if in the midst, if there's enough evidence to demonstrate that she truly was just relaxed around him and likes him or likes him enough to uh, chat with him every now and then, in the midst of that, she is also posting these videos. You would wonder what's going on there. There could be a viable explanation. Like I said, she could worry. In fact, there's a possibility, I'll just add this, that she was going to release these videos. Because, you know, if she's telling the truth, you can imagine she's watching him on, you know, on the screen. She goes online. She sees a lot of people uh, uh, saying a lot of things about him. You know, I'm guessing there wasn't a lot of positive things about him, but nothing along the lines of what she experienced. And it's re-triggering it for her or something. And she might now feel like, hey, maybe the society is primed to hear this because if I just came out with this before, and the, you know, and she even said this, the way he comes across, he doesn't come across to her anyway as someone that would do that sort of thing. There is no profile that does this sort of thing, so that's me. But I, you know, I could see people, particularly the way he presented in the first couple episodes. You know, he just seemed like a a real jovial, nice person. It also kind of throws another th uh, event in a different perspective. Matthew was on the couch, and he was being very quiet, and Jeremy was noticing that. And uh, I think someone else was talking as well. They were both kind of um, playfully making fun of Matthew for being quiet. And then Jeremy got tried to get on Matthew's lap or something like that. Given everything that we are, are hearing, kind of puts it in a different light, right? Of bullying or physical invasion. I don't know. I'm just remembering that event. Anyway, so 
uh, um, where was I? So, well, anyway, so he's saying that she and him are really good friends. Yeah. Uh, uh, okay. Well, well, let's see what happens. We were working together on a marketing project as recent as last year, which, again, without giving too much away, working together on a... Okay. This, I think, does help his case. It, it doesn't mean it didn't happen, uh, but it does throw something into question. You know, if I were on a jury, this would push the needle slightly. Um, we would love to hear from her, she, you know, because she might say, yeah, 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 I, I did all those things. And he has skills in this area, and he's one of the only people I know, and I know he's not going to hurt me again. And, yeah, I, I, I like to be friends with my exes, and uh, it was an opportunity for a win-win for me and for him. So, yeah, I, I threw it out there, and uh, I stand by that behavior. I, I, you know, It doesn't mean what I'm saying isn't true. So, you know, she might say something like that. But anyway, just, uh, uh, well, he has everything kind of blacked out. Why would he do that? Uh, he's naming her name. Oh, no, her name is on there. It's Meredith Walsh, I think. So what's blacked out? The dates? Why would that? Or I don't know. <laughs> oh, it's it's their phone numbers. Right, right. He's blocking out each of their actual phone numbers. Anyway, or their usernames on some sort of DM. Anyway, okay, I had to kind of zoom in and study this. There's basically only... Uh, two statements here. There's one statement from her and one statement from him. She is saying, yeah, I can help you with this thing. Go ahead and send me this thing. And then he says, yes, I can do that. Let's do the, you know, it's, it's mid conversation. So yeah, uh, we don't know when this, or it looks like 23, I think. Yeah. Uh, I mean, just, I'd, uh, I'm curious what she would say. You can certainly be traumatized by an abusive person, and then at some point later, be friends at a distance and think, well, he's not going to try to attack me now because we're no longer involved with each other. And, you know, we, we can be friends. That, that's, that's totally possible. That's what I'm assuming. Marketing project for a business that I was working on that happened right before I went on the show. She is one of the people that knew I was going on the show because I had to pause working with her because obviously I've got no contact with the outside world while I'm doing that, so had to put it on pause. Also, texting me, saying... That would be interesting, though, to hear what she would say. All right, so just chiming in here, the rest of this video will be just for members of the channel, so if you want to watch this full video and all the other videos in this series and all the other member-exclusive videos that I have published, you can become a member of this channel, it, only if you want, only if you care to. And everyone out there, please take care of yourself because you deserve it. You really, really do.